Sometimes I can go back to metabolism, combine it together. Yeah. I usually would start with, you know, a GI and then go to metabolism. I mean, I can still do that for future. So how does each pylori get diarrhea? Diarrhea? No, urea. Oh, urea. <coughs> blood because um, you know urea is reabsorbed and it's all secreted in tissue yeah urea is not only in the urine I thought it was like only in the blood coming out of the but in blood it leaks see capillaries are remember <laughs> there's no perfect system yeah You guys are good? You're good? I w whenever a group is good to go, just raise your hand so, I c so you're good. So I want to give you enough time. You're good. <coughs> One more minute. The more you discuss it, the, the happier I get. You know? Turkish tea. I think it's caffeine. Yeah? Maybe it's not caffeine, it's something else. Turkey, it depends. You try your own grade. It is many different flavors. Many different flavors. Maybe you like one of the flavors. No, flavor, I love them all. I just like black tea, period. But because of its headaches that they're giving me, I just can't drink it. Did you do anything with the soccer thing? Or maybe if I can even start running in the morning. Yeah. So let's meet here every day six, those three days a week, six thirty. Meet here. Yes. No, no, seven thirty. Seven thirty. Afterwards. Okay. So if you want to arrange other time after school, after school. Yeah. Or evening. How was your trip? Okay. I need to run too. Okay. Yeah. The Marine Valley, you know, there's a round track around Marine Valley. I think that's perfect. <laughs> Done? Done. Done. <laughs> 
Nina's gonna beat him. Okay, guys. <laughs> For them? <laughs> All right, so let's see how I would tackle this question, okay? So I'll tell you how I would do it. And then hopefully it is something similar. A 48-year-old male develops dysphagia after returning from Brazil. So when somebody returns from Brazil to travel history and they have dysphagia, I'm going to immediately think of Chagas disease. If it is or not, I don't know. At least at this point, that's what I'm going to think. Because I have no other ideas what are other pathogens or what is related to Brazil that will cause dysphagia. So far, maybe T. Cruzy. Okay. He takes nitrate for chest pain. He takes nitrate for chest pain. Okay. Is that significant? Okay, if he's taking nitrates for chest pain and still he has chest pain, that means he already has MI, so this is probably not. He smokes one pack per day, okay, and occasionally drinks alcohol. What is the underlying cause of dysphagia? Look at the age. What would be the cause of dysphagia in this age group? Infection. Infection. That's one. Anything else? Smoke. Alcohol. Smoke. Alcohol. Alcohol. Antibodies. Fibrosis. All of them. Yeah. 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 But how about nitrate? Would nitrate ever cause chest pain? No. No, it shouldn't. Yeah. If anything. <clears throat> now. I take my thing back. Nitrate will also cause chest pain. Yeah. Well, these guys... Cause yeah, but it will not cause dysphagia. Nitro will not cause dysphagia. Yeah. But he's not having chest pain. Yeah. No, it does. It says here he's, he's being treated. So nitrate actually makes dysphagia relieve because it causes dilation. Okay. So that I think that's why I put that he takes nitrate for chest pain. So that means he should not have dysphagia. You know, he should not have dysphagia. Despite that he has dysphagia, that means it's not because of heart <coughs> problems. See, remember right atrial hypertrophy can cause dysphagia. No, left, no. Seven. Left. left atrial hypertrophy cause dysphagia, right? So <clears throat> nitrate can sometimes help you with that. Okay, or antiarrhythmics can help with that chest pain. Okay. But anyhow, in this case, what did you guys pick? <laughs> E. And what's the name of the pathogen? Trypanema cruzi. That's correct. Good job. Does alcohol cause dysphagia? Yeah, but in binge drinking. In binge drinking. How does it cause dysphagia? Esophageal spasm. What else can it do? It puts you at risk of echolasia. And cancer. Cancer, cancer, cancer. How about smoke? Esophageal cancer. Okay. Fibrosis? Scleroderma. Very good. Auto antibodies? You know, give me an answer for each one of them. There you go. So, alcohol, cancer. Smoke, esophageal cancer. Antibodies, Plummer Vincent's disease or syndrome. And fibrosis, scleroderma or stress. Good job, good job.
Somebody in charge of those things for Tuesday, Thursday. So I'm going to meet the faculty this Saturday. Um, but they should be always, every Tuesday, Thursday, should follow up with you guys and give you homeworks and stuff. Because this kind of pushes the extra edge to do something. And I think he got. Dr. Munir, you are recording those questions So we will get it. I want, I want him to, again, he saw the EKG, but I want him to focus on things that we covered now, so it solidifies. You know, it's better to learn something solidly than learn something small, a lot of it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah? What's your answer? Okay. One person can speak only once. Who can tell me what is lower esophageal mucosal tear? What does that mean? Anybody? Somebody tell me. Raise your hand. Okay. Diana. Mallory Weiss. This is Mallory Weiss tear. Very good. What's the cause of Mallory Weiss tear? Anybody else? Yeah. She's at risk, but what's the cause? Vomiting. Vomiting. <coughs> what is retching? Vomit. Retching is forceful vomiting. Forceful, forceful. Yeah. So that's mostly it's the high pressure plus the acidity that can cause tear. Right? Not everybody gets Mary Weiss tear. I mean a lot of people vomit, a lot of people drink. But it has to be something additional, maybe genetic predisposition as well, right? Good, so that's good. Esophageal perforation, what's that? Nope. Raise your hand, somebody whoever wants to do it. Honey. Borhov. What is Borhoff? Rupture, rupture of the esophagus, complete rupture of the esophagus. Very good. <clears throat> or, or you can say a hole through esophagus, right? Good. Somebody else, esophageal venous hypertension. Muhammad. Varices. What's the cause of varices? Okay. Poral hypertension, poral hypertension. Okay. Barrett's esophagus, Sam. Okay, change from what to what? I have to hear you, Sam. Squamous to columnar. So you'll call him columnar metaplasia. Excellent. You're correct. Good job. This is the result. Yeah. This is the result. Yeah, I just I want him to tell me what it is first. Yeah. Now. <coughs> Can you call another name? Where is esophagus? Okay. One is columnar metaplasia. Testing. What else can you cause it? Testing. Intestinal metaplasia. Gastric metaplasia. Most commonly gastric. Because the epithelium changes to gastric type of epithelium. What's the cause of Barrett's? GERD. GERD. 
or any acid reflux. Okay, it doesn't have to be chronic, right? Okay. So this is GERD. Zanker's diverticulum. Who can tell me what is that? Okay, it is outpouching or outpocketing or dilation or stretching of the esophagus in a balloon shape, right? Or, you know, like when you have a pimple, you know, it sticks out of your skin. The esophagus from in, it sticks out. But there will be a cavity. So if this is the esophagus, that means it will have a cavity like this. So there's a space. That's what outpouching means. Of which layers? All three. All layers, excellent. It's all. It's the stretching of all layers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But it can initially it starts with what mucosa, mucosa going into the myo, right. muscularis. Yeah. But sometimes it can be the entire thing, especially if it's Zanker's diverticulum because it's not just little, it's big. Okay. <clears throat> That's true diverticulum. False diverticulum, the muscularis is not involved. Only submucosa and mucosa. But anyhow, so out patching where. Upper and lower esophagus. Yeah. Upper esophagus. Upper esophagus. Upper esophagus. Exactly where? Is there any esophageal diverticulum that's in the lower part? Uh, yes. Hiatal hernia. Excellent. What's the name of that? Para esophageal hernia. Paraesophageal hernia. So Zanker is always higher up. Yeah, very good, very good. In the book, I think it says lower, right? No, it says upper. It says upper in the book. Okay. Shasky's ring. What is that? Okay. Can somebody tell me what's incompetent gastroesophageal sphincter? Zach. Huh? Incompetent. Yeah, that's correct. Incompetent means it's not closing properly. It's not functional. Very good, very good. Bleeding. Gastric ulcer. What is that? Gastric ulcer, gastritis. Okay. So now we can go to question. At least you understand the choices. It's telling a 45-year-old female comes to her primary physician for a follow-up examination. So just regularly. She's not complaining of anything. She just comes for follow-up. Her laboratory results show elevated AST and ALT. What is AST? Aspartic amino transferase. And what is ALT? Alanine amino transferase. Excellent. AL is for alanine. AS is for aspartic. And then amino transferase T. Okay. Should have been, it would be better if it was AT, ASAT, and ALAT. It doesn't matter. You know they don't have it. It's, this is famous now. <laughs> Can't change the names. Imagine changing the name of <coughs> Facebook to something else. not going to work. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so ALT and AST now. <coughs> what are these two enzymes? What would you find them? Liver. 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 These are liver, functional, or structural enzymes. Functional. What does it indicate? That there is structural damage. Because these enzymes are trapped where? Within hepatocytes. If you measure them in blood... How did they even get into the blood in the first place? They must have been hepatolysis or hepatic cells were damaged, so they leaked this enzyme and you found them where? In blood. So now, in a viral RNA. So if somebody tells you, you know what? By accident, in somebody's blood, I found AST, ALT, and viral RNA. Hepatitis. Hepatitis. Could it be chronic, acute, or what? We don't know. Good enough. You know? It could be acute, it could be chronic. We don't know. It's not telling you. Okay. Huh? We don't know. <laughs> if untreated, now we're telling you, if untreated, the patient is at the greatest risk of developing what? Chronic hepatitis. Eventually becoming cirrhosis. And a complication of cirrhosis? Varices, portal hypertension. So what would you choose? Good job. Good job. Yeah, Sam said C. I was going with B. Sam said C. Oh. I'm going to give Sam credit. Sam said C. He's my part of my group, so. That means he's a cute dog. 
But if it keeps going that way, it can lead to... Uh, first, it will lead to A. Remember this. It can lead to A. And then it can lead to C, and then eventually it can lead to B. So all three are be correct. But when you talk about hypertension, that's more accurate. Okay, so again, portal hypertension, always cirrhosis, always cirrhosis. The connection you're supposed to make is if there is hepatitis, you know, this can become chronic hepatitis. At this age group, I mean, I don't know which hepatitis is more likely. In the United States, you know, there are two types of chronic hepatitis in terms of viral. Hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus. Okay? People who are... <coughs> As, uh, hepatitis C is actually, you get it from plasma and blood transfusion, okay? And hepatitis B, STD, STD. Not as much. Both are correct, but this is mostly with blood. Mostly with blood. <coughs> Overall, C is more common cause of chronic hepatitis, okay? But you can have a carrier state. So you can have people that have this and they never develop any problems. So again, I'm asking, if untreated, if untreated, there is a possibility this can become what? Cirrhosis. Chronic hepatitis and cirrhosis. Possibility. You can leave patient untreated and they will never have any issue. Okay. So not all hepatitis, but again, the risk of hepatitis C becoming chronic hepatitis, it's about 60 to 80%, but it does not mean that it will 80% of the time become cirrhotic. Okay. Okay, good. That's good. Thank you. 
congenital disease, right? Yeah. right? After each feeding, he chokes. What is choking? Food going to the trigger. Yeah. If there's food going into the tube, airways, you would choke on it. So that means somehow the food is going from esophagus into what? Trachea. Trachea. There has to be, in order for food to go from esophagus to trachea, there must be communication. Right. Right? And what do you call communication? Fistula. Fistula. There has to be fistula, at least. But now, Further, what does it tell you? The endoscope the coils, coils in the middle, in the middle of, the of the chest. And where do you put the endoscope? Esophagus. Esophagus. Where do you put the bronchoscope? Trachea. 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 So this is not a bronchoscope, this is an endoscope. endoscope. You put it in the oral cavity and in the esophagus. So if it coils in the esophagus, what does that mean? There is like closing. Uh, closing. So that means the esophagus is completely locked, the atresia is not moving forward. 
Now, so what are you going to look for? Fistula. Esophageal, fistula, trachea, esophageal, fistula, and? Atresia. Esophageal atresia. <coughs> Not tracheal atresia. Right. Right. So you have A, which fits, right? Right. You have B. Diverticulum, no. Diverticulum is not going to explain any of this. It's just regurgitation of undigested food. It might not be coiling. The, the endoscope will still pass through. Tracheal atresia, no. If this is esophageal atresia, yeah, maybe. Maybe it will be. Then you're stuck. Which one to pick? It's up to you. Aortic arch compressing the esophagus. It will cause dysphagia. Don't coil the endoscope. Yeah, this will cause dysphagia, not choking. And what's this one? Failure. No. That will cause GERD, acid GERD, reflux, yeah. right? So, uh, go for A, that's what I do. A is good. You're correct. Good job. Answer was A, yeah. Answer is A. Look, if you're thinking of C as being esophageal atresia, it makes sense, but it's tracheal atresia. In tracheal atresia, you shouldn't have any problem. You, you will not even live because you can't breathe. So A just explains the first part of the question. We just have to assume that it's not No, no, let me do it again. Good. So there's two problems. Number one, the baby chokes each time he's fed. He chokes on food. That means there's food going into the airways, and it's irritating, and the person will cough and choke, right? So that means somehow the food is going into a trachea. There has to be communication between trachea or an esophagus, right? Maybe epiglottis could have been the problem, so we don't know. But there's somehow communication. Food is going into trachea every single time. And that's not by chance. You know, by chance, sometimes you, you breathe at the same time and you eat, maybe, but every single time, you're going to suspect what? A defect, right? Further, it tells you the endoscope coils in the chest. I mean, the endoscope is not moving further. It's not moving down the esophagus. When you put it, it coils back. So that means the esophagus complete blind pouch. So we're looking for esophageal atresia. We're looking for esophageal and tracheal fistula. Do you have esophageal atresia here? No. We have tracheal, but that's nothing to do with this condition. Tracheal atresia will be bronchoscopal coil, not endoscope. And the person will have trouble breathing to begin with, because they cannot. You might have to do tracheostomy. They will not survive okay, after birth. So, <clears throat> esophageal diverticulum does not explain any of this. Esophageal diverticulum is simply here or here, and that means it will store food, <coughs> undigested food. Simply, when you lay down, it will come, it will regurgitate, and it will produce bad smell and taste in your mouth. But doesn't it also, can't it also cause aspiration? Aspiration pneumonia? No, can't it? Well, can't you aspirate? Not always. Not always. It may, it may, because not always. See, after when, after when, after when you're sleeping after and you're breathing and there's food sitting in your mouth, and by accident you aspirate food, yes. But when you're awake, no. It's not 100%. Okay, My problem with the question was the word after each feeding, not during or with each feeding. Yeah. So after you feed, food goes down. Yeah. Oh, meaning, you know, that's you're that's finishing. Yeah, yeah you're, too, you're analyzing too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was saying here, I was analyzing too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why he was overdoing it. Okay. <laughs> so this will give you GERD, acid reflux, nothing to do with it. And this aortic, this will simply give you dysphagia. And this will give you dyspnea, apnea actually, not even dyspnea, apnea, no breathing. No breathing yeah. And this will give you what? Regurgitation. This will give you choking plus coiling like he's saying. <laughs> Sukun means it's good. 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 What's the term? It's good is be quiet. No, but it's, there's a term for a. No, no, it's A boy. How do you say a boy? Oh, well. Well. It's good. 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 No. It depends which one you want to pick at that point, depending how the questions were. It would be difficult. It would be difficult. No such thing should be tested. Because how do you, what do you base it on? You base it on choking? If I base it on choking, okay. Now, if I base it on choking, for sure, it would be fistula. 
if I base it on coiling, attrition. Okay, but if I give you both information, both answers, mm, it's not good. 50-50, whatever. Wrong, wrong question. But there's there no acetylgel atresia. No. That's yeah. Nina, you had a question? Somebody, Malcolm, I see somebody's hand. I had a question. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, level. Yeah, you can have a treasure, but you know, when you feel, you know, when you feel, it doesn't really, in that sense, would help you, but usually a treasure are right here, in the middle of the esophagus, not necessarily too high or too low. Okay? So the esophagus, for example, trachea will divide right here in the notch. That's higher than middle. Yeah. So, no, I'm saying, so this is what it will look like. Let me show you. So this is the trachea. I mean, so this is the esophagus. And here is the trachea. So let's say the trachea divides here. The esophagus continues and it becomes blind pouch here. It's from the other side. Yeah. Okay, so it's not, the atresia is not immediately, immediately at the level of fistula. No. Okay. So there's different varieties of, it, of this congenital defect. But you mean, you're right. If it was here, you can think about it, you can use that information. Even if you can use sometimes those information, like he said after, somebody said after distracted me. You know, there will be words that will distract you, but get the overall concept. The overall, somebody's choking and the, and the endoscope is not moving forward. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I made this on the plane, these questions, so it didn't exist before yesterday. You stole it before? Huh? Because I'm smart. No, I mentioned it in the <coughs> class. It's okay. It's okay. I will get there one day. <laughs> today. <laughs> You'll get it today.
Okay. A 55-year-old male smoker is diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma of the upper anterior esophagus at the level, at the level of second intercostal space. This patient has a risk of developing what? Hoarseness? Okay. How about liver congestion? No. 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 Okay, so you say no. How about urinary incontinence? No. 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 How about cardiac arrhythmia? No. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How about acid reflux? No. 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 Okay. So what's happening? <coughs> so here is the esophagus, right? Yeah. Where is the cancer? Upper, upper lower. Of the main, uh, so the lower. cancer is here, right? In the upper esophagus. <coughs> what's related to the esophagus in the upper region? Trachea. Trachea. Recurrent laryngeal nerve. Left main bronchus. Anything else? Arch of aorta. <coughs> okay. <coughs> yeah. T two, not T three. Yeah. The rib curves, but it's second across space. Yeah, right here. That's where you have the arch of aorta and everything. That's where you listen to hard sounds too. Okay. <coughs> Recurrent laryngeal nerve. <clears throat> so, when you have a cancer in that re region, could it cause hoarseness? Yes, yeah, yes. Because of what? Compression of? Recurrent, Recurrent laryngeal nerve. That's correct. Could it cause liver congestion? No. No. Why not? So far. So what is liver congestion? No. If I ask you this... No. 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 <laughs> the way you say honey was hilarious. Yani, this, this, all. Whatever it is, whatever it is. Everything. You can, you can pick your choice. Yeah. <laughs> Let me choose for you. <laughs> what does congestion mean, guys? Pressure, maybe. No, fluid accumulation. When you have nasal congestion, what is that? Yeah, there's fluid in, in, in the nasal cavity. Swallowing. Right in the Congestion means simply fluid, <coughs> means edema, 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 edema. Yeah. So why would liver be congested because of inferior vena cava compression? I mean, we're talking. We're not talking about something all over the place. We're talking about esophageal cancer. So you're gonna think about structure that related to the esophagus. Is there anything related to the esophagus that can lead to liver congestion? Mm. Yes, if you compress Below. inferior vena cava. Below. No, I'm just saying in general. In general, you should be thinking like that. I'm not talking about <laughs> upper and lower right now. So, <clears throat> now, liver congestion could occur, of course, but not with upper esophageal cancer, with lower esophageal cancer. Correct? <clears throat> I just want to make sure you understand. Urine incontinence, is it possible with pancreatic, what is it, esophageal cancer? What is the incontinence? Inability to contain urine. So if you're not able to contain, what happens? Leaks. So incontinence means urine leakage spontaneously without your control. Okay. <clears throat> now, are there any nerves that supply the bladder? Not up there. Not up there. There S2, 3, 4. Okay, so they're much lower, but we don't know that. I mentioned it earlier, remember that when you talk about hindgut, Hindgut, what are the structure behind rectum or in front of rectum? Bladder. 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 So, you know? So that means nerves coming from there to the, at least to hindgut, you know, is S234. We discussed that. So compression of S234 will cause incontinence. Incontinence. Not vagus nerve. Not vagus nerve. So anything about transverse colon will be vagus nerve. It will maybe cause something else. So, so no. Cardiac arrhythmia. Would this cause cardiac arrhythmia? Now, esophageal cancer could, but lower esophageal cancer. Lower esophageal cancer. So it should have been here. Maybe adenocarcinoma, right? Okay. Acid reflux. Could esophageal cancer cause acid reflux? Lower. The lower. Yeah. 
Now, the lower esophageal carcinoma is a complication of acid reflux. Right. So, yeah. Okay, it can dilate the sphincter, it can cause damage to the sphincter. Now, <coughs> remember, just because you haven't been exposed to something, it doesn't mean you can't use the knowledge you have to make conclusion. So that's where I think difficulty comes for you guys. You memorize something, and then you say, oh, you only want to see things on the exam which you haven't been exposed to. But you should be able to use that knowledge, okay? So the answer is A. Good. Two strikes. Oh, look. thinking. I'm, I read the question like it makes no yeah, sense. No, no, no. It's kind of tough, but I don't know how I made it. What was I thinking? I probably didn't add information that I should have. See, I, I rolled out the, the one is, is impossible. And which one is that? What's the one that's impossible? Everything else. Speaking of everything about C. That's true. <laughs> Okay, I think you should have answered by now. Hani, what do you think? Okay, guys, we're done. We're done, we're done, we're done, we're done. Hani, tell us why. Because uh, I think it's huh? B. He's saying it's B. Yeah. Why? Because the diaphragm is skeletal muscle and related to the sphincter of the lower sphincter of the esophagus. Mm -hmm. And when it's weak, so the sphincter is weak and it's allowed the acid to get into the. Okay, so first of all, I think I understood that his diagnosis is GERD, or acid reflux, correct? Yeah. So now we want to know what's the cause of GERD, right? Yeah. You think it's skeletal muscle or weak diaphragm, or the esophageal hiatus is loose. It's loose yeah. Why? What in this question tells you that? Uh, manometry and endoscopy are uh, normal. Okay, so let's do manometry. What does manometry show you? The tone of the muscles. Tone of what? The esophageal muscle. Esophageal muscle, so, okay. So esophagus, smooth muscle, right? Yeah. If it's normal, sure. What else does it show you? My Okay, so that's probably normal. And Good. The skeletal muscle of the esophagus is also normal. Right. Okay, but he's talking in this case yeah. of the diaphragm. So I'll keep it. Good. How about 
the endoscopy, it's normal too. Yeah. What does it tell you? There's nothing wrong with the There's nothing with the, the, there's nothing with the lumen of the There's no veins. So is there anything in here that I can rule out? Submucosal veins? You might not be able to see it, but okay. Mucosal glands are normal. Because you can see that on endoscopy. But <coughs> varices will be difficult. You can see them. You can see them. So maybe you can do biopsy. Wait, but glands are small, aren't they? On endoscopy, so when you see the mucous membrane not being so distorted, you can... Yeah, varices are submucosal, so they will be just as if, if the lumen is... If they're engorged, you can see them, sure, but it's difficult. <coughs> but yeah, you could say, so this is normal. You can rule this out too. But further, submucosal veins... It has nothing to do with chest pain. It's just bleeding. It's just bleeding. So we're looking for symptoms of GERD or something that causes GERD. Yes, absolutely, this is correct. Good job. Skeletal muscle? No, not of Not to that much, yeah. Not that much. The LES tone is okay, but overall, the diaphragmatic tone is affected. So it wouldn't show on the LES that much. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, give me a second. Hold on. So, when it comes to uh, diaphragm contributing, it's not that much. So it will cause some GERD because it's it's elevated and so forth. But the tone is still the same. The tone of LES. You know, when we say LES, we say selective LES, not necessarily of the diaphragm contributing it. It contributes to it, but when you do manometry, it doesn't take that into account. <laughs> so, what you do on endoscopy, you can, you know, it's a camera, you can see big, you will see the epithelium is slightly changed. Okay, so it's inflamed or it's red. You cannot really see the, the true glands, of course, you have to do biopsy. Is it the same thing, like, when you do endoscopy, they tell you you have lack of fiber and stuff? Lack of fibers? Yeah. No. So you have to increase your fiber diet. Yeah, because you have constipation, maybe that's why. No, no, I mean like... You cannot do an endoscopy, no. An endoscopy, if you see, like, you can see the epithelium is damaged. It doesn't tell you what your diet should be and shouldn't be. Oh, wouldn't yeah. that get damaged from GERD? Yeah. The gland? Yeah. Yeah, so a mucosal gland, as I said, so Barrett, so this is referring to Bar Barrett, so if it's normal, that means it is initial stages, it's not so big deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Smooth muscle because manometry tells you it's normal. Manometry can measure the tone of smooth muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Esophageal sphincter? Yeah. Yeah, but if the cause of the GERD was loose, incompetent LES, it would be correct. But manometry is telling you it's not. Manometry is telling you the tone of the LES is normal. So it has to be something else. Skeletal <coughs> muscle, in this case, the diaphragm. Diaphragm. Yeah, defect in the diaphragm. Okay, so this is defect in the diaphragm. Just so you have to be thinking. If nothing else, the, these are con it's this was the difficult question. Yeah, we just had to make a lot of connections. <laughs> but that's why I, I I test you now on practice. I don't think you will see it on the exam, but just to kind of make you think. Anything else, guys? Yeah. See mucosal glands. <clears throat> now if. If the cause of this was purely GERD, you know, you will see some, some damage in mucosal glands. But an endoscopy, you can really not see mucous glands. You know, that's one thing. But, <clears throat> and the other thing is, you can have Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus and mucosa metaplasia and difference is not a cause of heartburns. It's a complication of it. So here we're talking, you suspect the anatomical defect. See, if the defect of chest pain, in this case, is mucosal irritation, mucosa something? It's possible, but not atrophy, not a defect in it, no. The cause is acid reflux. <coughs> and what caused that acid reflux? See, acid reflux will lead to mucosal damage. Non-mucosal damage leading to acid reflux. Yeah. 
So if had I asked you what is the complication of this, this would have been a good option. What could it lead to? It would be a good option. But when I say you suspect a defect that is causing this chest chest in the first place, what could that be? What it has to be LES problem. Whether it's esophagus itself or whether it's a, a diaphragm. Okay? Yeah. Okay, who wants to help me with this question? Honestly, I don't know if there's right answer or wrong answer. As I said, it's just to make you think. The idea is to make you think. Okay, so as I said, when I'm, we're making these questions yesterday, so I just want to make sure I make it as less informative as possible and as difficult as possible so that you think. That's the idea. Thank you. Okay, yeah, Astra. Go for it, yeah. C. Okay. Very good. So what she's saying is this person is at risk of alcoholic cirrhosis because he is 40 year old and there's no history of alcohol. But anyways, 40 year old male, you didn't think of alcoholism first. Okay. If this person was, let's say, a 40 year old male or female from Afghanistan, what are you going to think? No alcohol. You're going to think of hepatitis B or hepatitis C. Still, okay. So if this person is a uh, female, 40 year old, what are you going to think? Hepatic, Hepatic vein thrombosis, especially if she's taking oral contraceptive and things like that. But good. As long as you know this is varices, this is varices, that's good. Are they ruptured? No. 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 If they're not ruptured... A routine examination. Oh, okay. Now, when somebody comes in on a routine examination and you find varices, what are you going to do? Would you deliver transplant? No. no. <laughs> no that's a little bit too crazy. You deliver transplant when you really have non-functional liver. So if it's completely devastating cirrhosis, there are more symptoms. She wouldn't be complaining of routine examination. She would be having like confusion, lethargy, bleeding, and a lot of problems. Okay. Although this is the ultimate cure, but okay. Would you do surgery? No. You don't want to do something so difficult right away. What if you can do something small and easy, right? As a healthcare worker, your job is to make life easier for people not make it difficult and worse. 
financial difficulties a problem, surgery cost. Okay, just per night, the hospital will charge you like 20000 mm -hmm. just per night. And then there's the doctor fees, there's the diagnostic fees, there's this fee, there's that fee. Mm -hmm. So, now, <clears throat> would stop alcohol intake help this patient? Sure, yeah, yes. sure, that's good. So, we have so far one good answer. Intake of fiber-rich diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, portal hypertension viruses have nothing to do with fiber-rich diet or... <coughs> That's and sat into your lifestyle. Well, like the GI, yeah. It's nothing to do with it. Monometry. Would monometry help in any way? No. Because no, you're not... You're seeing the veins in my liver. No, not a monometry. <coughs> no, he's saying... Venogram. I'm, I'm saying you are seeing the vein dilated, so... Why would you do monometry? Yeah. 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 What does monometry do for you? Check muscle, muscle tone. Muscle, muscle tone. tone. This is not a muscle problem. This is dilation of venous. So this will not help. I mean, yeah, you can... You can advise them or you can indicate them and you can send them somewhere to do the procedure, more money for you and the insurance company, but it wouldn't help. Poor cable shunt, would that help? Yeah, this would be the second best choice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now, first choice, good. Second choice, which is shunt and surgery is the same thing, but this is more specific. And then the third option. Okay. But if they stop the alcohol intake, would it stop their varicity? It wouldn't progress to severe form because it's asymptomatic right now. But it didn't give us any history of alcohol. But is it? Well, I don't you suspect aren't varices asymptomatic until it becomes symptomatic? Yeah, so as I said, there's not information. If they were telling you that a varices are severe, they could rupture, then maybe you have to do poor cable shunt. Yeah. Yeah. But do s part. something because first. Simple. Because they're 40-year-olds, may I assume they're maybe vegetarians? Well, there's nothing else. You know, the number one. The question is, what's your question so everybody can hear? Oh, so because they're 40 year old male, we have to assume that they are binge drinking. No, binge drinking is not a cause of cirrhosis. Chronic alcohol intake. Binge drinking leads to what? Acute pancreatitis. We haven't got there yet. Okay? Binge drinking causes... Acute pancreatitis and esophageal tear, which is what? Malleable Weiss tear, because of the too much vomiting. It could, but it's not necessarily binge drinking, no. Diffuse esophageal spasm can be caused by me just giving you this look. You know? <laughs> so, but there's a thing. <coughs> Chronic alcohol intake. Cirrhosis is not a disease... Of one overnight, day. one day, one year, two years. It's a progressive, slowly progressive. We're talking about 10 years of drinking. So it's, it's not even a, a disease of people binge drinking for 20 years straight once a month. It's chronic alcohol intake, meaning the patient is alcoholic. The, strong, the strongest association between cirrhosis and alcohol is chronic alcoholics. So people who are addicted, they're likely to have cirrhosis much, much more. But of course, some people can have, you know, what if you have, uh, your liver is already poor in enzymes, you know, P450 system is already weak, and you take small amount of alcohol. Yeah. Female have more of the alcohol dehydrogenase enzymes in P450 than men, so they're less likely to develop cirrhosis compared to men. Does not mean they will not develop it. They, it might take them 10 years, it might take you 6 years, or it might take them 15 years, make you 10. But it depends on the physiology of a human being. At the end of the day, it is the best option. Stop alcohol right away. Yeah, and this is the first step. Then you go to shunt. If nothing is resolved and there's symptoms and so forth, and you think it could rupture, then shunt. So with diet and alcohol stop, they can do that actually. Okay? Yeah. Um, you said females are less at risk. Do like hormones come into play for that reason? Like the cycle? Excess like... Not necessarily. No. No. It's simply the amount of enzyme they have. So increased in females. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are some men that are by far more tolerant than females. Yeah, yeah. Overall, I'm speaking, right? Yeah. Okay. All right.
Maybe this is textbook C. Right? Good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, you will get two or three. The thing is, on the exam, because there's stress, there's you by yourself, there's not a relaxed state. <laughs> but that's how it is. This is how it is. Okay. Yeah. You want to go? Go for it. Okay, 35 year old female. Yeah. Complete dysphagia. Yeah. And then that is done. The yeah. dysphagia is resolved. So obviously okay. this is Palmerobinsa because the webs. Yeah. And Palmerobinsa comes as a triad, even though it's not under iron deficiency anemia, it's included that triad. So you see. Yeah, Palmerobinsa is correct. Good job. Simply again, so dysphagia. And then endoscopy does not show because the webs are delicate. When you do the endoscope, they might break themselves. So that's why you, you But you should look for the trident plumber, Vincent. The only reason endoscopy resolved the web so you can't see it. Bless you. Okay, next, eight. There's two more to go. Okay, answer guys. E, e left gastric artery. Yes. What is the supply? Good. Yeah. So left half of the sphinct lower sphincter and left half of the smaller curvature. Very good. Done. Straightforward. That was a bonus. Simple line questions are always the most difficult ones. <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. That's fine. Okay, keep it. He's sorry. He's surprising me. And he could too. MashaAllah. Respect. Show, show us the finger. Which finger? <laughs> <laughs> the most important finger. <laughs> At least in this country, especially when you're driving. <laughs> I don't know how, how he was holding the food. No, no, no. They start to cook after that. Like I, I was giving them like comments, structure. Okay, guys. Ahmed will tell us why. What's the answer? No, no, talk, talk. No, 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 you talk. You want to be Muhammad? Muhammad, go ahead. No, Ahmed? No, Ahmed, go. Ahmed, go. <laughs> HIV positive patients are the greatest risk of developing esophageal uh, ulcers. Good. 
Good. Why? Because the HIV positive patient have like immune com like their immune uh, suppressed. Yeah. Something like that. Good. No, no, you good. Keep going. Suppressed. Yeah. And which is the the more likely to get infected with the CMV virus, which is going to cause yeah. a visual. Good job. A esophagitis. Yeah. Will cause esophagitis and therefore cause ulcers. But doesn't esophagitis cause esophagitis? No. No. Look, there's multiple types of esophagitis. Chemical, bacterial, viral, infectious, and this and this and that. HIV positive patients are at risk of GERD? No. No, no, no. HIV does not increase the GERD risk of GERD. So, sorry, how does it cause ulcer? Now, what he's saying is that this patient is HIV positive. He is in a compromised state, right? Therefore, the risk of opportunistic infection like CMV increases. And CMV causes esophagitis and esophageal ulcers. Not gastric, not duodenal, esophageal ulcers. Okay? This person is at the greatest risk of developing esophageal what? Metaplasia? No. No, not metaplasia at all. Well, I because thought, I thought it was complication bears esophagus, complication of esophagitis. So that's why I figured metaplasia. Which is true, but not because of HIV esophagitis or infectious chemical esophagitis because of reflux. Correct. Yeah, it makes okay. sense. I got you. Not yeah. Like so if there is esophagitis caused by acid reflux, it is still esophagitis. But, okay, got you. Okay. You Perforation. Is this patient at risk of perforation? No. The only risk is the fact that this person has an HIV positive. No. You know? So perforation will bore half patients. A patient who's going under endoscopy, endoscopy, they're at risk of what? Perforation. But even esophagitis patients sometimes could. Okay? Especially if it's uh, <clears throat> group A streptococcal, which can cause transmural inflammation. Look again, if inflammation of the esophagus is only limited to the mucous membrane, it cannot lead to bore half. The inflammation must be transmural. The entire thickness of the wall must be inflamed, so it's weak, it can rupture. That's perforation. Spasm. Can it lead to spasm? Yeah, maybe. Maybe because if, you know, you come in contact with food and your esophagus like, oh, it hurts. It's possible, but it's not common. Atresia. Yeah, that's congenital. Newborn. If this was a newborn, you would say something like that. Diverticulum. No, if it was smooth muscle problem, you'll think of diverticulum. <coughs> you must have to be weak, so. But, good job. You're studying. Very proud of you. Okay, next. Good job, Ma. Last question. Maybe there's two more, but I don't know. We'll save that one for the exam. <laughs> Give it to us and then pick it for the exam. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Close it, yeah. Yeah, close the book. We're going to use it. We're going to use it here. No, it wasn't open. Your mind should be open, yes. Your book should be closed. <laughs> Not that way around. <laughs> We're done. You done? Good. You guys did one. They did one. Who wants to help me with this question? Anybody? This group is done. This group is done. That group is done. Other groups. Just somebody. Jump in. Be brave.
You guys did already one question. They did one question and Asas team did one question. Anybody, just help me out. Who cares about the answer? I'm not, cons I'm not interested in the answer. I'm interested in understanding the question and breaking it down. What approach would you use? <coughs> Raima, you help me. Guys. You're agnostic? No, I'm agnostic. <laughs> oh. um, I still didn't hear you. I don't know why. Lost. Oh, thank you. Amazing. Well, I love it. This is the voice. You're the right person now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're lost, let's find yourself. Okay, go for it. So, 18 year old has dysphagia. Yeah. And the left lens is misplaced, dislocated. Okay. Only two things. That's good enough. Dislocated lens, <coughs> I wouldn't even care for that. But the person has what? Dysphagia, right? Yeah, dysphagia. Good. How old is he? There you go. I don't care for anything else. Is this person at risk of bronchogenic carcinoma? No. No, no only her. Only her. Let me help her. Do you think he's at risk of having cancer at his age? No. Yeah. Especially when I don't give you history. Even if I give you history of smoking, he's too young. So unlikely. Unlikely. Remember, bronchogenic carcinoma is not, it's acquired, <coughs> it's not congenital, it's not genetic. So when you look at the age, you know, we say, oh, unlikely. Is this person, can, can this person have aortic arch aneurysm mm -hmm. at this age? Okay, you say, okay, I'll put a small check mark, not a big one, <laughs> whatever you tell me. Left atrial hypertrophy. Is this person at risk of atrial hypertrophy? Who, what are the patient? Now, look, use your best judgment. Sam, you raise your hand? I was just going to say, yeah, because if he's 18, he's probably going to have hyperactive. Okay. So, the hyperactive athletic force is male. Mm -hmm. His heart can actually be Excellent. So, he's saying, if this person is hyperactive, young athletic man, when do men or teenage boys become athletic at what age so is three four years enough for hypertrophy sure okay maybe no but let's just say for his sake in addition to that when you do exercises exercise should never cause a disease would it cause left atrial hypertrophy would it cause general the entire heart hypertrophy it will be even diffuse hypertrophy the heart will enlarge in itself not just one area so when you use left atrial hypertrophy, not, it, would, it should never happen because of exercise. Never, never, never. Because otherwise everybody will have a heart attack left and right. right. Yeah. So exercise-induced hypertrophy is a good thing. It's a unified, concentric, diffuse hypertrophy of the heart, plus it enlarges, it dilates, and it in, in hypertrophies at the same rate. So at the end of the day, the ratio of the chamber is not any different than the, you know, in a, in a person who is not working out. Okay, so... Good. So left atrial hypertrophy. Who's at risk of left atrial hypertrophy? Mitral valve stenosis patient. Could people be born with that? Of course. Of course. Of course. Again, we're, I'm not looking for the right and wrong answer. I'm looking for how do you approach questions. This should be making you think. You shouldn't just jump on, oh, this is the answer. No. Exhaust, because we're practicing. Exhaust every choice. Make sure it teaches you. Make sure you learn from each choice. So yes, there could be mitral valve stenosis, but very rare overall. Palmary valve stenosis is more common in, 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 in newborn or congenital. But anyhow, paraesophageal hernia. Is that possible in an 18-year-old? Why? Weak diaphragm? Okay. Okay. Esophageal atresia. Yeah, congenital. Now, <clears throat> in a esophageal atresia, this person will can have difficulty swallowing, but it's progressive. No, it's you're born with immediately. So let's cross this out. Esophageal hernia would it cause dysphagia? No. Esophageal Isophage hernia. Did I say atresia? Esophageal hernia. So we cross out e. Esophageal hernia or paraesophageal hernia would that cause dysphagia? It will cause the opposite of dysphagia. Yeah, because, uh, the LES is loose. It will cause GERD. 
it will cause GERD. It will cause GERD. Now you're stuck with two choices. What do you pick? D. Yeah, aortic, aortic arch aneurysm in young people. Why? Marfan this is Marfan's, Marfan. yes. Marfan. Okay, they grow with time. The more pressure increases, hypertension. Will, when they're born, it's normal, but with time, it slowly dies because more and more blood pressure. Good enough. That's okay. Yeah. The only. <laughs> The only reason it's <coughs> it's Marfan is because dislocated lens gives you more evidence. But even if you didn't know that, even if you don't know it's Marfan, left atrial hypertrophy is a disease of older people. Okay, it takes time for the left atrium selective to hypertrophy. Okay, so as I said, I hope these questions are making you think. I don't care for answer right away, as long as you can think. The answer, when do I care for answer? Just before step one. That's why I really care for answers. Right now, I care for how much you can learn, how much you can think and, and use the right approach. Okay? Uh-oh, I didn't finish this one, but let's see. What do you think, guys? Acute gastritis, good. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it will be chemical esophagitis. So I can ask you which of the following is is your diagnosis but not have acute gastritis. So you're going to pick it exam? Yeah. <laughs> okay. If it was spine. Possibly. Possibly. This DES is really bothering you guys. You guys just love that one word. Because everything it causes diffuse esophageal spasm. <laughs> Oh. 